Have you ever wanted to add interactive buttons to your game? Today, we are going to learn how to do just that by creating simple buttons in Relive with C++. Imagine having a beautiful background image with two buttons, one to start the game and another to exit. Click the Start button and we will print a message to the console. Click the Exit button and we will close the game. It's easier than you might think. Stick with me for the next 15 minutes and you'll have a fully functional, interactive interface ready to go. Let's dive right in. We will use the C++ starter template for Relive that I have created with VS Code. You can download this template project by visiting this GitHub repository. Let's rename the folder to something else. For example, Relive buttons. Now we can open the folder and double click on the main.code-workspace file. The template project is now open. You can see it is organized in folders. We have to open the source folder and double click on the main.cpp file. If we now compile and run this project by pressing F5 on the keyboard, it displays a bouncing ball example. Cool, our setup works. We are ready to start developing our project. Let's delete the ball.h and ball.cpp files and all the code from the main.cpp file. Just leave the include relive.h line and the main function just like I did. We will develop everything from scratch. Now we have to create a simple game loop. If you don't know how to create a simple game loop, please watch my detailed video called Get Started in Relib in 20 minutes. It will teach you everything you need to know. I will quickly create a new game loop now. First, let's create the game window. In it, window, parenthesis, 800, comma, 600, comma, quotes, relive, buttons tutorial. Now, let's set the target frame rate for our project. Set target FPS, parenthesis, 60. Now, it is time for the game loop. While, parenthesis, window should close, parenthesis, equals, equals, false, curl brackets. Now, we have to call the begin drawing function. Begin drawing. Let's now paint the background of the window black. Clear background, parenthesis, black in capitals. And finally, let's end the drawing. End drawing. Our game loop is ready. The last thing we have to do is to close the game window. Close window. Our game loop is ready. If we run the game now, we can see a window pops up with the color and the dimensions we defined. Cool. Now that we have our game loop ready, it is time to add some visuals. Let's load and display a background image to make our game window look more appealing. All the necessary graphic files for this project are located in a folder named Graphics. This folder should be placed inside your game directory. You can download all the graphics, including the background image, from my GitHub repository. For this tutorial, we will use a background image named background.png. Ensure that this image is placed inside the graphics folder within your game directory. To load the background image in Raylib, we will use the load texture function. Let's add this line of code right after we initialize the window in Raylib. Texture to the background is equal to load texture parenthesis quotes graphics slash background.png. This line in Relib loads an image file into the GPU memory as a texture. Using Texture2D is preferred over image because textures are loaded into the GPU, allowing for much faster rendering. Next, we need to display this image in our game window. We do this using the draw texture function. We write this line of code inside the game loop right after clearing the background. Draw texture, parenthesis, background, comma, zero, comma, zero, comma, white. The draw texture function takes the texture, the coordinates where you want to place it, and the color tint. We use white to display the original colors of the image. By specifying zero, comma, zero as the coordinates to start drawing from, we ensure the image covers the entire window starting from the top left corner. 
If we run the game now, we can see our background image displayed in the game window. It is that simple. Beautiful. Now that we have a stunning background in place, it is time to add some interactivity to our game. We are going to use object-oriented programming to help us organize our code. By creating a button class, we can easily reuse this code in future projects with minimal changes. As we are creating a separate class for our buttons, we need to separate the declaration of the class and its implementation. This is where the header file and the implementation file come into play. The header file contains the class declaration, including the class name, member variables, and function prototypes. It serves as an interface for other parts of the program to use the class. On the other hand, the implementation file, usually with a .cpp extension, contains the actual implementation of the class functions. This is where the member functions defined in the header file are implemented. Separating the class declaration from its implementation allows for better organization and abstraction of code, making it easier to manage and maintain large projects. So, we will need to create two new files to create the button class. I press Ctrl plus N to create a new file and then Ctrl plus S to save it as button.hpp. I will use the .hpp extension to distinguish the C++ header files from the C header files, which have the extension .h. Now we can start writing the header file of our button class, pragma once. This is an instruction that ensures that this header file is only included once in a compilation unit to avoid duplicate definitions. Now we can declare our class, class button curly brackets. Our class will have some public and some private methods. So let's add public colon here and private colon here. Now the first public method is going to be the constructor. So we type button here. We also need a destructor. So we type tilde button here. Now, what are the basic methods we need for the button? We need a draw method to draw the button on the screen. So let's declare this method as a public method because other parts of the program will have to call it void draw. Now let's think about the attributes we're going to need. First of all, we're going to need an image for the button, but we're going to load this image to the GPU memory to achieve faster rendering. So let's create this attribute as private. We won't let any other part of the program to touch this image. We will use Raylib's Texture 2D data structure. So we need to include Raylib here. Include Raylib.h. Now let's create the attribute. Texture 2D, Texture. Now we need to know the position where the button is on the screen. So let's create a position attribute of type Vector2. Vector2 position. In Raylib, Vector2 is a data type representing a 2D point or vector with X and Y components. It is exactly what we need to represent the position of the top left corner of the button. To make our button class more flexible and reusable, we are going to pass the image path and the position on the screen as arguments to the constructor. This way, we can create buttons with different images and positions easily. First, let's update our constructor declaration to accept these parameters. const car asterisk image path comma vector2 image position. Now a basic version of the button class is ready. Let's create the implementation file. One quick way to do it is to go to the unimplemented methods here. As you can see, VS Code notifies me that these methods are not implemented. Let's implement the constructor first. We can click on the Quick Fix button and then select the first option to create the .cpp file and the definition. Perfect. This saved us some time. Now in the constructor, the first thing we have to do is to load the image of the button. We will use the image path we get as an argument. Texture is equal to load texture parenthesis image path. Every time we load a texture, we need to unload it when the game is closed to free up the memory it requires. We will do that in the destructor because it is called automatically when we close the game window. 
button, colon, colon, tilde, button, parenthesis, and curly brackets. Unload texture, parenthesis, texture. Now, in the constructor, we have to assign the image position we get as an argument to the position attribute of our class. Position is equal to image position. Now, let's draw the button on the screen. So, let's implement the draw method. Void, button, colon, colon, draw, parenthesis, and curly brackets. Now, we are going to use the draw texture v function to draw the image on the screen. Draw texture v, parenthesis, texture, comma, position, comma, white. This function draws a texture 2D with a position defined as a vector 2. It's exactly what we need. Now, we are ready to see our button for the first time. Let's go back to the main file. Here is a quick shortcut. You can press Alt plus 1 and VS Code will get you back to the first open tab of your project. First, let's import the button class. Include button.hpp. With the class imported, we can now create a button object. Let's create the start button. Button, start button and curly brackets. We have to pass in the path to the button graphic and the position of the button. Quotes graphics slash start button dot png comma curly brackets 300 comma 150 our button is ready next we need to draw this button inside our game loop in the game loop after clearing the background we just have to call the draw method of the start button object start button dot draw if we run the game now we can see our button for the first time beautiful the button appears at the position we specified, but it is very big. It would be very nice if we could scale the image of the button to fit our needs. This is exactly what we are going to do now. Back to our button.hpp file. Let's add another parameter to the constructor to handle the scaling of the button image, comma, float, scale. Let's go back to the implementation file and add the scale parameter here as well comma, float, scale. OK, let's now scale the image. As we said before, we are working with textures and not images. So our button image is loaded in the GPU memory and it is saved in an attribute named texture. The problem is we cannot resize a texture. We can resize an image struct in Rayleigh. So instead of loading the button image as a texture, let's load it as an image instead. So let's delete this line here where we load the texture and add the following line. Image, image is equal to load image parenthesis image path. Now to resize this image, we first have to find its original width and height. That's very easy in Rayleigh. Int original width is equal to image.width and int original height is equal to image.height. Now we just need to calculate the new image width and height. Int new width is equal to static cast int parenthesis original width times scale. And int new height is equal to static cast int parenthesis original height times scale. We cast the values to int to ensure that they are whole numbers. Now we can use the image resize function of Raylib to resize the image. Image resize parenthesis ampersand image comma new width comma new height. Now we can create a texture from the resized image. Texture is equal to load texture from image parenthesis image. And now we can unload the image. We don't need it anymore. We have saved it as a texture in the GPU memory. Unload image parenthesis image. That's it. Our scaling functionality is ready. Let's test it out. Let's go back to the main file one more time. Let's make the start button smaller. So let's make the scale factor 0 0.65, comma 0 0.65 here. If we run the code now, we can see that the button now appears smaller in size. Perfect. Our class works as expected. Now it is time to add the click functionality. To detect when our button is clicked, we need to add a method that checks if the mouse is over the button when we press the left mouse button at every frame of the game. The method will return true if the button is pressed. Let's go back to the button.hpp file and add a public method called 
is pressed. Bool is pressed parenthesis. This method leads to arguments, the position of the mouse cursor and a boolean that indicates if the left mouse button is pressed. So we type vector2 mouse pause comma bool mouse pressed. Let's implement this method. First, we need to check if the mouse cursor is over the button. To achieve this, we are going to use the check collision point rec relib function. This function returns true if a point is colliding with a rectangle. We just need to check if the mouse cursor position collides with the rectangle that encloses the button. First, let's create a rectangle that encloses the button. Rectangle rect is equal to curly brackets position.x, position.y, texture.width, texture.height. And we need to cast the width and the height of the rectangle to floats. Static cast float here and here. Now, all we have to do is to check for a collision between the mouse cursor and the rectangle of the button. If, parenthesis, check collision point rec, parenthesis, mouse pause, comma, rect. If the mouse cursor is over the button and the left mouse is pressed, we have to return true. And mouse pressed, curly brackets, return true. Else, return false. Our method is ready. Let's test it. In the main.cpp file inside the game loop, after we check for events, let's call this is pressed method of the start button. But first, we need to get the mouse position and to check if the left mouse button is pressed. Vector2 mouse position is equal to get mouse position. Bool mouse pressed is equal to is mouse button pressed, parenthesis, mouse button left. Now we can call the is pressed method of the start button. If, parenthesis, start button dot is pressed, parenthesis, mouse position, comma, mouse pressed, curly brackets. We can now print a message to the console. Let's include IO stream. Include IO stream. And now we can print something to the console if the button is pressed. std colon colon c out start button pressed std colon colon end line. Let's run the code. As you can see, our code works. If I click on the button, the message start button pressed appears on the console. Beautiful. Our class works. Now that our button class is implemented, we can add buttons to our game very easily. Check this out. We're going to add the exit button and it will take us less than a minute. Outside of the game loop, we add a new button. Button, exit button, curly brackets, quotes. Graphics slash exit button dot png comma curly brackets 300 comma 300 comma 0 0.65. Now inside the game loop, we check if the exit button is pressed. If parenthesis exit button dot is pressed parenthesis mouse position comma mouse pressed curly brackets. If it is pressed, we can exit the game. To exit the game loop, we are going to use a new boolean variable named exit. We create it outside of the game loop. Bool exit is equal to false. And now we have to check if the exit variable is true in every iteration of the game loop and exit equals equals false here. Now, if the value of the exit variable is true, the game loop will end. So all we have to do to close the game is to set the exit variable to true when the exit button is pressed. Exit is equal to true. The last thing we have to do is to draw the button on the screen. So after we draw the start button, let's also draw the exit button. Exit button dot draw. That's it. We can now run our game one more time. Perfect. As you can see, both buttons now appear on the screen. If we press the exit button, the game exits. Congratulations, you have successfully created and implemented a versatile button class for your Rayleigh projects. With this button class, you can easily add interactive buttons to any game, enhancing user interaction and control. Thank you for following along with this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and you are excited to use these buttons in your own projects. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more tutorials like this one, please like, comment and subscribe to my channel. Your support 
helps me create more content for you. Happy coding and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.